All right. Good day, Calcularians. Today we are going to look at the relationship between a function and its second derivative. Before we get into the second derivative, let's do a first derivative real quick. So I've got a cubic function here, f of x, x cubed plus 9x squared plus 21x plus 9. It has a relative maximum and a relative minimum. It is increasing until the relative max, then decreasing, and then increasing. So if I was to graph the first derivative, we get this green graph. This green graph matches up perfectly with what we saw on the original function, f of x. Relative max is our zero of our first derivative. Relative min is our other zero. Notice f of x was a cubic function. The first derivative is a quadratic, one degree less. When my original function f of x is increasing, the first derivative is positive. This time in which the first or the function itself, the red graph is decreasing, the first derivative is negative. It's all below the x-axis. And then after it reaches that relative min and starts increasing, the first derivative is positive. So that seems to work out perfectly. Now I'm going to turn off that first derivative and graph the second derivative. Now hopefully to no one's surprise, the second derivative is a linear function. Now let's talk about what this linear function tells us about our original function f. There is one zero on the purple graph, the second derivative, and that zero, that x-intercept, is the point in which my f of x changes from concave down to concave up. At that zero, where I change from negative to positive, where the purple graph now changes from negative to positive, notice the original function is changing from concave down to concave up. So there is our connection between the function itself and the second derivative. It talks to us about concavity. When my original function is concave down, the second derivative is negative. At the point in which it changes concavity, my second derivative is zero. When the original function is concave up, the second derivative is positive. Now, we can make a huge connection to the very beginning of the year in which we talked about what it means for concavity. And concavity means you know, when you're concave down, it means your consecutive intervals, the rate of change between consecutive intervals is decreasing. So here, we have really, really extreme positive slopes, positive, 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 it gets to zero, and then it starts to get very, very negative. So our values are decreasing. And notice the first derivative, the function itself is decreasing. When the first derivative is decreasing, you are concave down. When the first derivative starts increasing, notice the red function is concave up. With that change happening at negative three, I change from decreasing to increasing on the first derivative at negative three. What else is happening at x equals negative three? There's a change in concavity. So those are your two ways to be thinking about concavity. How the first derivative, if it's changing from increasing to decreasing, or if the second derivative is changing from positive to negative. Both of those tie into the original function and its concavity. A lot to digest. There will be a lot of practice in the coming days. Sit with this and let me know if you have any questions.